Hey class, um, this is a demo on how to make a uh, a box that uses curve bending on the laser cutter. Um, the so this is the thing we're going to be making, and this is what it looks like when it's flat. You can unfold things. So I'm going to do a new design, and I'm going to call it hexagon box from screencast. And I'm going to make three parameters. Box height. This is 100 millimeters, about 4 inches. And box diameter. Also 100 millimeters, about 4 inches. And uh, that's it. That's all I'm going to, I'm going to make, just two parameters, actually. I'm going to create a new sketch. I'm going to create a new component first called, uh, called box walls. And I'm going to create a new sketch on the ground, so on the top plane. And I'm going to make a hexagon using the polygon tool. So create polygon. And I'm going to use circumscribe polygon. The difference is just whether the circle that defines its size is on the inside or the outside. It doesn't, there's no other difference. I'm going to click the center, and my, radi my box diameter was 100, but this dimension is actually the radius of the box, so I'm going to divide this by 2, so it's the right size. 6 was the default, so I got lucky um, with the number of sides, and if you want, you can constrain this. So that it's flat with the horizontal vertical on one of the edges, but you really have no reason to. Now I'm going to make a hole in the box by making these two lines from the center to the top and then adding a dimension here, something small. Um, I'm going to make one of these vertical just so that the gap is small. Then I'm going to use the trim tool, the scissors here, to delete this line, this line, oops, I'm going to use the trim tool to, to delete this line, and then this line, and then this line. So usually we want a closed loop. In this case, we actually want an open loop so that we can be sure that it can be unfolded. Because if it's closed, it's, there's no way to, to break it. Then I'm going to click Finish Sketch. And now we have this hexagon. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to use a, new, a whole new area of, of fusion called sheet metal. And we're going to go to Create Flange. And what flange does is it makes something uh, that, is, that is known to be sheet metal. So I'm going to click flange, and then I'm going to click the edge, and then you're going to drag that up. And we have a folded box. How far am I going to dra uh, drag it up? Box height. And then I'm going to push enter. Then when you click OK, this isn't realistic. You can't t bend wood to this tight of a curve. This is a, you could easily bend steel to this tight of a curve if you had a steel bending shop, but we don't, that's not how we're making this. So if you go into modify, and then sheet metal rules, and then in this design you can see steel millimeter. There's other things in the library where they're all metal, so I might as well just edit the steel. And here's where you pick the thickness of your material, which in our case is 3, but we can change it to like 2.5. The K factor I think we're going to keep the same because um, we're not really cutting metal. For bend conditions, where it says bend radius, right now this says thickness. But um, this is like a rule for steel, that you can bend steel to a, to a radius that's the same of its thickness. But we don't, that's not our rule. Our rule is going to be like 35 millimeters or something. And that's what I'm going to test. Um, there's a lot of other options that we're not going to talk about, and honestly I've never used before. But once I click Save, you can see that now all of these edges have a radius of 35 millimeters. If I click inspect and then click that edge, it's 35 millimeters. So it actually filled it all those corners for me. And what's so cool about this is that now I can click create flat pattern and it's going to ask me one question. Which face is the stationary face? And in this case I'm going to click this one and then OK. It's going to think for a minute and now it unrolled that surface. And now all I have to do 
is export a DXF. This checkbox isn't necessary for Illustrator. And I'm going to call it hexagon box DXF walls from screencast underscore millimeter. And I'm calling it millimeter so I know the dimension. And then I'm going to open an Illustrator. 1 equals 1 millimeter. Original size, OK. And then if I zoom out, here's all my geometry. And you remember like, oh, but which thing is which? This is confusing. If you open the layers palette, you can see the outer thing. This is the only thing you need to cut. And these are in between these two lines, this is where you're going to have to fill with your curve bending geometry. You know, with your with like many lines, you know. Maybe something like this. Uh, Command D will repeat things like that. And you could do maybe something like this. Maybe something like this. This is just an example. There are probably better ways of doing this. So if you fill this region with bend lines, and then you don't need to actually cut all this stuff. You just need to cut these. But now you have an exact model of how it will unroll. If you click Finish Plat Plat flat pattern, it'll go back into here, and then you can make other features. Um, for example, I can say solid, create new component, sorry, activate the home component, create new component, and I can say box bottom. I can click new sketch. I can click this narrow surface here. Um, I'm going to project uh, oh, you can do it one by one, really? There you go. Um, I could have also probably projected it, but I got nervous. Um, I just had to select the body. Let's try that again. Uh, new sketch. I'm going to click here. In this case, it doesn't it doesn't seem to have projected everything. I think because it's a sheet metal part. So I'm going to go to create, project, and then I'm going to select the body. There we go. And now now it has all the geometry. Um, but we have this little gap here, so I'm going to have to close that gap manually with the line tool. And now we have an exact replica of how this thing is supposed to bend. So if I click Finish Sketch, I can extrude this inner profile to make like something on the inside of it. Negative thickness. I'm just doing negative 3 for now because I forgot to make that parameter. And I can make a new component. Or I can make a new component inside this component if I wanted to, called bottom, bottom two. And I could extrude the same sketch by making it visible again. Extrude this one upward, also three millimeters. And now, if I go to inspect section analysis and sweep through the model, and you can see what we have. We have a bent box that bends around this piece and is capped by this piece. Um, and then you can just extrude these, export all of these faces of DXFs by in the case of bottom two, activating bottom two, clicking create sketch on the surface, then clicking, then clicking finish sketch, and then finding that sketch you just made, exporting as DXF, box, bottom, box, bottom, fast way to make long titles, and then command open again, one equals one, millimeters, because I model millimeters, find my hexagon, 
copy it, paste it, and we're halfway to making a laser file here. And you can imagine that if this were, to, uh, were a ball and it were to roll around this edge, it would make one complete revolution because the length of the top edge of this rectangle is exactly the same as the perimeter of the shape because that's how it was made. Um, yeah, the, uh, so that's how I might make a hexagon box using the sheet metal tools and curve bending. Similar applications could be done for all kinds of other kinds of projects. I hope that was helpful and feel free to email me if you have any questions.